Hello dear students, welcome to lecture 5. The topic for today's discussion is factors aiding effective presentation. In the previous lesson, lesson 4, we started discussing the different aspects of oral presentation skills and uh, in this lesson we are going to look at uh, factors which actually uh, scale up your presentation quality. We are going to look at these uh, some of these aids that are going to improve your presentation qualitatively. Uh, in this slide you see the first point use of audio visual aids. Uh, people generally talk of audio visual aids, but most of the aids and technology under this category is underutilized. At the same time, we have to keep in mind that technology is never a substitute for a teacher in the classroom, for a supervisor in the research lab, and also technology is not a substitute for n number of students who are sitting in front of the teacher. Nevertheless, having said that, technology should be optimally utilized. So in that context, uh, we are going to discuss a few more things. If you look at this first point, during a presentation, audio visual aids help ensure the attention of the listeners. If you are only listening to the teacher in the classroom or in the lecture hall, uh, attention span is very minimal. But if you bring in the visual aids, the audio aids, then it will enhance their attention span. It creates the necessary shift of attention. I am underlying that. And even increases interaction between the presenter and the audience. The audio visual uh, clue there triggers a lot of unexpected responses. People who come into the lecture hall deciding not to say anything, just to be passive speakers. The moment they, an audio visual is presented, they suddenly come up with interactive queries and clarifications. So it, it does something. And as a presenter, if you are at the helm of affairs, you need to use these audiovisual factors. Now, second point which I would like to mark out here is eye contact. Whether with technology or without technology, more so with technology, you should try and ensure eye contact because there is a tendency for the audience to see, keep seeing the gadgets, the mics, the equipment and the speakers, whatever gadgets are there. Uh, it's a challenge, it's a fine challenge for the presenter to keep the eye contact in spite of all these aids. Eye contact forms one of the most essential means of maintaining a rapport with the audience. As you all know, to build a strike a balance, to build a rapport, eye contact is very essential. This enables receiving feedback and holding attention. Let me move to the next slide. This should be actually three and four. Third one is body movements. During a presentation, the body movements too have to be carefully monitored. They should neither show lack of confidence nor be very aggressive. Assertive attitude with the right facial expression and posture is ideal. Now you need to strike a balance between assertion and aggression. Very often if you are not trained properly, you tend to become very aggressive in your body language. And if you are or to hide that sometimes lack of confidence or to they become aggressive or sometimes if you are not well informed, you become very, very submissive. So both should be avoided and a balance has to be struck. And the right facial expressions have to be maintained, a smiling face, a cheerful face and a good posture will go a long way. Also movement of the body. If I am constantly shifting my body from right to left, left to right, then it hinders uh, the way I am doing now. This hinders uh, concentration of the audience. So as much as possible, uh, balance out your weight when you are standing on both the feet properly. So posture assumes 
a lot of significance. Then I come to the space. Depending on the situation and context of presentation, the presenter has to constantly negotiate the space between uh, himself or herself and the audience. There is a space, uh, what we call as a field of action yesterday um, in one of the lectures. Preferably, he or she should avoid the public space and use more of the social space. Rather than being static at one spot, the presenter should be able to move and negotiate the points as well as uh, the space with ease. Right now, I am facing the camera there and addressing you, but uh, in a class, in a presentation, I have the freedom to move. So while maintaining the eye contact, I need to use the social space, making it more interactive. So along with audiovisual aids, if you are also interacting with uh, some kind of a uh, walking around, moving towards the benches, that makes a lot of impact. Next we have the kind of words or phrases that you use. The choice of words and phrasing can be very important in a presentation. Some of the general principles underlying this are, I have listed down here. Don't use abstract or vague words. In our anxiety to sound very uh, scholarly, sometimes we use high sounding ornate words which are very unfamiliar to people and they are also sometimes you should not, there is a tendency to use abstract words and phrases that should be avoided. Next, use active rather than passive sentences. Uh, if you remember your lessons in English, voice, passive voice, active voice, active voice uh, sounds uh, more acceptable to the audience. So you need to construct your sentences uh, in the active voice mode. Like instead of saying, um, he gave a cup of tea to his brother. Uh, that is better way of saying rather than saying his brother was given a cup of tea by him, the passive voice. So you need to uh, be uh, very uh, uh, concerned about that. Cut out jargons and cliched phrases. Cliched phrases, uh, jargon, jargon, too much of technical, highly technically dense kind of a jargon that should be avoided. A little jargon terminology is okay. Uh, it's uh, much dependent on the kind of field, the subject you are talking about. Cliched phrases like uh, engineering runs in his blood or uh, where there is a will, there is a way. I mean, that's of course a proverb, but there are phrases which have been used for many years. Try and avoid those. You can use very interesting, appropriate, idiomatic phrases and proverbs. And uh, like in one of the lessons uh, preceding this, we have spoken about the U approach. So you need to adopt the U approach. I am also right now addressing uh, using the U approach. Wherever possible, replace the third person with the second person. Instead of saying they or he or she, better to say you. Bring in personal examples and experiences wherever you can. That makes it a lot more interesting. Keep the main points as near the beginning of the sentence as possible. Main points should always come in the beginning of the sentence or the paragraph or the, the particular section you are talking. Talk of the way you position yourself and indicate with linkers the way you are moving. Uh, within the structure of the lecture or presentation, you, the use of linkers which in the previous lesson we were discussing. So choosing the appropriate uh, linkers on the other hand rather than these are very important. Then uh, the use of the visual aids. I would like to begin this section by saying a room hung with pictures is a room hung with thoughts. Look at this uh, saying so beautifully said a room which is hung with pictures is actually a room hung with our thoughts. Beautiful way of uh, exemplifying, saying uh, what pictures can do to the audience, the images that you stick around. You must have all noticed that the use of pictures or visual aids is always helpful in terms of memory. 
when you see, you remember it longer rather than what you have listened to. It helps in retaining one's attention and also promotes understanding. In a presentation, similarly, the use of visual aids makes a better effect on the audience. They help us remember the contents better and assimilate the matter more effectively. Sometimes visual aids save presentation time and also make the presenter's work easier. So one can always rely on the efficacy of slides, images, pictures, the use of the visual aids and uh, save on one's own time and also enhance the retention part of the audience. And lastly, I have listed out some uh, links here. Some of them I am deliberately repeating because it is a kind of a uh, unending source of knowledge relating to presentation skills. And I've also deliberately repeated Ken Robinson's presentation here because it's, it exemplifies the, he's a good thorough presenter and the topic of presentation in this particular slide, creativity, is of immense value to practicing engineers, doctors, students or from all sections. So please go to this in your free time and interact with among yourselves and with us later on. Thank you.